Hello Year One and welcome back to our reading. This week we've been thinking about non-fiction texts, so non-fiction bits of writing. And if you remember on Tuesday we were thinking about what the difference is between fiction and non-fiction. Fiction being the story books that we read, non-fiction being the information that we read. I'm going to look a little bit more about the non-fiction books today and look at the different things that you might find in non-fiction writing. So we looked yesterday at the features. Real facts gives information. Sometimes it has a contents page, but that's usually in an information book. And the piece of writing we're going to look at today is just one piece of writing. A glossary. Again, you can sometimes get these on one piece of writing, but they're usually in books rather than just one piece of writing. An index, again, is usually found in non-fiction books, but it's not to say you can't have it in a piece, uh, one piece of writing. Headings and subheadings, diagrams with labels, and some photographs. Now, again, you can sometimes get diagrams, you can sometimes get photographs, you don't always get both. And a fun fact, did you know that non-fiction books do not need to be read in order? And the same goes for if you're reading a non-fiction text or a piece of writing that's non-fiction, you can read it in any order you want and you will still get information from it. So today we've got a non-fiction text here about the Emperor Penguin. So we've been learning about penguins in our English, so I thought we'll use some of that learning and we'll link it with our non-fiction reading as well. So down the side there's lots of different things we usually find in information text and we're going to see if we can spot it. So the first thing I'm looking for is the heading. Now the heading is like a title. It tells you what the whole piece of writing or the whole book is going to be about. So can you spot where the heading is? Yeah, right up at the top it says the Emperor Penguin. The next one says subheading. Now a subheading is a smaller heading. Okay, still tells you what you're going to be reading about, but it's part of the big heading. So we know the Emperor Penguin is the big heading and we want to know some little smaller headings that tell us something about what we're going to read about about the Emperor Penguin. Can you spot those? Yeah, there's two of them. One of them says habitat and the other one says body. And there is actually one at the bottom that says did you know? And in this particular information text they've made it clear where those are by making them in bold text which just means they're a bit darker. Sometimes they have a line underneath them as well. It just depends on the text. And the next one says diagram. Which bit of it would be the diagram? See if you can spot it. Yeah, it's the picture. Now, in this case, it's just a picture, but you could have um, a picture of anything, a drawing or a photograph. In this case, it's a diagram. And then labels are things that I use within the diagram to tell you information. And they usually have a line pointing to a, a, a part of the um, diagram or the picture that they're explaining. So can you spot the labels? Yeah, there's quite a few of them. I've just put one um, arrow in, but there are lots of different ones all around that penguin there. Each of those little boxes, yellow patch, long hooked beak, thick layer of feathers and fat, webbed feet, brood pouch, they all ha are labels and they've all got little lines that draw, that sorry, that point to where on the drawing that is, okay? The next one says bullet points. Now bullet points are little dots and they're used in a list, either a list of facts or a, a list of information and they just break the writing up a little bit more rather than having a big chunk of text. Can you spot where they are? Yeah, they're just at the bottom there. So there's three of them. It's a did you know at the top, so it's kind of a did you know question like we've seen in the non-fiction slide before. And here it says the female lays an egg and passes it to the male. He keeps it warm all winter in his brood pouch. Adults can grow up to 130 centimetres. They can swim underwater for up to 22 minutes. And then at the bottom it says real facts. Now I have not put an arrow to that because all over the page we've got real facts. We've got the bit right up at the top. The emperor penguin is the largest penguin in the world. Penguins are birds but they cannot fly. They use their wings to help them swim. That's like a little introduction to the writing. Um, a little introduction to the emperor penguin and you find that a lot in non-fiction texts. Then when we look at that top subheading, Habitat, they live in Antarctica and it is very cold. Emperor penguins live together in a big group, a colony, so that they can keep warm. 
Those are all real facts. It's giving you information. It's giving you the bits and pieces that you wanted when you decided you wanted to read about emperor penguins. Okay? So, we've had a good look at this. We know where everything is on it. And tomorrow we're going to answer some questions based on this reading. <laughs>